to the stage and we'll prepare the things and at the exact time we'll start the the presentation cool. his presentation hi kisna how are you hi i'm doing fine how about you so i'm fine thank you are you enjoying phosphor g uh, uh yeah so i had a workshop on 27th and then i just gave uh, one talk yesterday and i guess this is the last talk for for this year good good w where are you from uh i'm right now in india so it's quite late already there yeah, it's uh, yeah it's almost midnight yeah uh, <laughs> how about you look like at uh, you look uh, the temperature and the weather looks very good at your place. I mean, it's quite sunny. I like sunny. Yes, it, it's the, the the sunset time here. Nice. I'm in Portugal. That's beautiful. It's about ah. uh, seven p.m. and the, the sun is, is is going through the window. Nice. But we have people from all around the world, the and world. it's yeah. really nice. You are. <laughs> almost midnight here <laughs> yeah the sunset and people are still waking, waking up, up. In the, in yeah the <laughs> <laughs> crazy yeah yeah and it's 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 the first time that we have this setup because when we move to the phosphor g to attend it we are all yeah. on the same time zone but this year we are all on different time zones and it's really really nice to have the, the interface is is very awesome i mean the uh, the social gathering where you can just play it as a as a super mario i was like okay <laughs> now i'm back in 90s <laughs> yeah yes. it's, it's fun yeah i've already tried it and it's it's really amazing <laughs> so yeah. you have your presentation with you uh i yeah i do have presentation if you can start to putting it sure. here so I can share. Yes, we have your presentation. I think is everything almost ready. Um, you can introduce yourself, Kisne, it's better to hear from okay. you, where where are you from, what you are doing, and we'll start in one, two, go, it's, the stage okay. is yours. Yeah, thank you, George. So, uh, uh, so as, as we said, good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever it is to, to everyone who is, uh, who has joined for this talk. Uh, we are actually going to spend next 30 minutes to understand how exactly we can create a scalable and, and secured REST API, especially dealing with the, with the spatial data, with the location information, uh, with the help of GeoJango. Uh, my name is Krishna, and I'm a freelance WebGIS developer. Um, uh, I do a lot of content creation as well in the WebGIS industry. So if you head over to YouTube and just search my name, you will find my channel over there uh, with more than 12,000 subscribers. Uh, apart from that, if you want to read more about me, uh, you can head over to my website and, and get more information and, and then connect with me. Uh, this is the first year uh, I'm, I'm talking at Phos4G. It, it has been a crazy and, and an incredible journey. I did a workshop for four hours on uh, geospatial analysis with Python. Yesterday, I did the talk on the same topic. And today, I'm here to, to present the, the special REST API with GeoJango. Uh, so basically, I have divided the entire uh, talk into a into couple of uh, blocks that we will go through and uh, not just presentation, but we will actually also have a look at the code. So at any point of time, if you guys have any question, uh, you can write it or, or maybe you can ask at the end. We'll have a dedicated time for, for the Q&A. So, uh, so what, uh, how I have divided this entire talk is into four main pieces. Uh, so if you have never heard of Django except the movie, uh, this is where we, we uh, I'll, I'll just make you familiarize with what exactly is Django and then how you can take the Django to create the uh, to create the APIs by using Django REST framework. 
uh, then we will uh, introduce the special flavor to the Django, making it uh, making it a Geo Django and and something that actually understands the the GIS uh, actually understands the location data and and, and treats it uh, in that way. And finally, we will also see how we can create the REST APIs using Geo Django, so that you can take your data from PostGIS, uh, make uh, make special operations on top of that, and also ship the data back to your client. Let it be any uh, any any client JavaScript library. Let it be open layers, leaflet, uh, anything like that. Because the point of using Django REST framework uh, with GIS is that you should get the data which can be used anywhere. So if you haven't heard about Django, uh, it's uh, basically Python framework uh, ba uh, based on the MVT model view template uh, uh, model. So generally when we code, uh, when we when we create applications in, uh, in Django, we use model to create the database models. We use uh, view to actually write the function that will actually get executed and then the template is is the html file where the where the data will be will be shown so uh, this is how uh, the django works and django has a built in security modules built in filter modules and and many more things uh, which is why i i prefer django because uh, it's it's sort of like a entire package where then you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you can just start writing your business logic and then django will take care of basic things like like just by adding few commands you can have the entire authentication model uh, including sign up login registration forget password and all those things ready for you so you don't have to think a lot about about how to do this every time when you are starting a new project uh, Django is also backed up by community. There are a lot of a uh, lot of big companies such as Instagram, NASA, Udemy, uh, who uses Django as uh, as their backend. And most importantly, uh, Django also has a lot of packages available. So for every uh, specific uh, for every specific need, uh, there are there are Django packages available. And if you cannot find the Django package, uh, at the end of the day, Django is also a Python. So, so you can always find the find the Python package. So, uh, if uh, I'll I'll just quickly show you how the code looks like when we when we use Django. So, if I just go to the application uh, VS Code, so you'll see that generally, uh, so this is GeoDJ is my is my Django uh, Django project. So it will get shipped with this folder and then dbsqlite and then manage.py. And then we can create an app every time uh, we want for our specific needs. So, so like that, we will uh, will basically create the Django application. Uh, usually, at settings.py, you can do all all of your settings. So, whenever you are installing new application, you can write it over here. And then, uh, second important thing that you have to see is the database. So, generally, Django will ship uh, ship with SQLite but you can easily change it to something that you want so for example postgis in in my uh, uh, in my example so why i'm using postgis is obviously because i want to save the the location data later words but you can also use specialite uh, if you want to if you want to do the same thing so this totally depends upon you apart from that we have urls so from here everything gets managed so so all the URLs are, are written over here. And then you can create your own applications. So for example, my main app contains again in itself a URLs. So here you can see that I have given that whatever is whatever URL I will write. If it is not admin, then it should automatically get into the main app URLs and then uh, and then uh, Django should try to manage them. So for example, the first URL that I have is completely blank. So that means whenever I will hit my, my website, this code will get executed. And uh, so this is the URL part. When we go to the view, you can see that this is how the view look like. So I have a model. I will come to it very soon. But then this view will basically return a base.html. Uh, along with the data and then inside templates we have the base.html so right now if i uh, if i run my code it will just simply show me all pokemon centers and then my name because that is what i have over here now the models is where basically we store the uh, uh, we store our uh, our database information so here i'm creating a new uh, table in my database known as pokemon centers 
and then here you can define all the fields and then related information to that so for example here right now i have name uh, master and rating and then i i will also define what sort of uh, characteristic does that specific column hold so whether it is it is a character field integer field uh, boolean field uh, what are the default values for that what are the maximum length for that do you want to keep the the field as 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 null is equal to true blank is equal to true all of things uh, all of those things are defined over here so once the model is defined we can do the migrations uh, which will basically take the data uh, uh, take take the take the data and then here you can see that migration simply uh, tries to actually convert this from the from the model to something actually something that that the the sql will actually understand and then it will work on that so by doing this you can you can create models and then you can keep on adding fields you can keep on removing fields and then you can do make migrations and then migrate to to make those changes uh, in sync with the with the database so by this time uh, once you do this you will have your uh, model ready and once you make the entry of the same model in admin you can then have access to this model using your admin panel so if i just go to admin and use my admin credentials by creating a super user you can see that i have a main app over here so you can see that django will generally ship with with users and groups so it's it's easy that way you can create n number of users directly you can also create groups to to club more users together and then here we have the pokemon center so i already had this this table ready for me with some data to show you guys so you can see that each of this uh, data will have name uh, master and rating and things like that so i can keep on adding more and more data and once i have the data with me i can then uh, go to my view and then i can fetch that data so here what i'm doing is i'm basically fetching all the pokemon centers and then i am sending that back to the html now of course this is the data in a uh, from from view so we have we also have uh, django has its own way to write html so here you can see that uh, we can write a for loop inside html using django templating and here i am actually looping through all the results that i am getting so if you check the view so whatever pokemon centers that i am getting so i am actually looping through those in order to get the uh, in order to get a specific object and then i am accessing each individual characteristic or columns of that object in order to uh, get that data so if i refresh it one more time you can see that i have all the information that i had in the database directly on the front end so it is it is that much easy to use uh, to use django now uh, what if we don't want the information in in the html but but we want it in in the uh, in a json format so that we can use it with uh, with modern frameworks like react angular vue or anything like that now in order to do that we use something known as uh, uh known as django rest framework so so if you see over here so this is how the django rest framework's documentation looks like they have a very beautifully written documentation where you can find lot of tutorials api guides and things like that so uh we will we will simply stop our our environment and then we'll just install django rest framework and django filters because this then directly provide supports to filter our data uh, easily so once we actually install these packages we will just make the entry of those packages into into again settings installed app so right now we are at the second stage where we have a rest framework and then once we have the rest framework uh, basically we create serializers.py so usually this file is is uh, is similar to how we create forms in django so serializers will also have all information about models there are different there are various types of serializers you can use model serializers to simply copy all the columns that you have in a model and then use it directly in the in the serializer you can create your own serializer from scratch Uh, so right now if i just simply create a model serializer which takes the model and all the fields assigned to it then i can use this serializer in the view to get the data in a json format so the job of the serializer becomes to uh, to take the data 
that whatever we are getting from the database from this specific model and then tries to serialize it. So if I now go to the views and if I show you one more view, so for example, this one. So here I have a uh, two requests. So if, if the request is get, then I'm getting all the objects and then I'm serializing them and then I'm getting it back as a JSON. And if it is post, then I'm taking all the data in a, in a JSON format. And then I'm again using serializers to post that data as a JSON so that serializer will convert it from JSON to, to something that Django then can process and then save the data back to the database. So you can see that by just adding a serializer, we are simply able to convert the, the Django view and template uh, into entire JSON world. So if I now add this to my URLs, uh, you can see that I already have it over here as a Pokemon API. And now if I simply head over to Postman and if I search for localhost 8000 slash Pokemon API, and if I just uh, hit this query, you'll see that I got the result uh, back as a JSON. And it is equally simple to also push the data because uh, if I just add the post request and in body, if I, if I use the same sort of uh, data or, or, or I'll just do JSON, I'll remove ID and then I'll, I'll do live from first and then rating will be 10. And if I simply send it, you'll see that the new data uh, is, is, is added. If I just use the get request again one more time, you'll see that the data will be somewhere here. So here we go. Here you can see the data. So this is how, uh, how using serializers and Django REST framework, our life becomes easier. Uh, next thing we do is we now add a Geo Django flavor to, to the Django application. So, so far we have seen everything that, that a non-spatial uh, application should do. Now, if you want to add the, the location information to your database, you have to start from the model. So instead of using the normal models, then you can uh, install the Geo Django and then use Geo Django uh, again in settings.py, first of all. And then again, back to the model. Then here you can define all of different types of fields. So let it be point field, uh, polygon field, multi-polygon field, line field, or even geometry field. Again, with, with each point field, you can see that there are so many uh, options that we can pass. So for example, for example SRID, spatial index, um, and many more things. Once we do this, and once we again migrate the application, we can head over to our admin panel one more time. And here, now you can see that uh, after these three columns, we now have a map from where we can actually select the location. So here I have uh, already selected a location for my for my this uh, uh, Pokemon Center known as Rocket City. And I can even actually change it if I want to. And I can save this. So by by just adding this field, uh, by just adding this uh, this point field, we are able to actually get the map and then and then uh, add more things to to our database. Now, if if we see the the post GIS, this data is actually stored in the in the geometry format. So you can actually have a look at this data in post GIS in the in the geometry column, and you can visualize it from there as well. So at this stage, now we already have GIS implemented in our, in our Django application. And then GeoDjango right out of the bat also supports the uh, many functions like creating buffers, contains, and all these kinds of things that you can directly use in the view and, and, and keep, on, uh, keep on adding more data. Now, if I hit my API one more time, you will see that we get the, uh, we get the data back. And uh, actually, this is... Uh, I think this is GeoDjango version. Let me just confirm one more time. Yeah, there we go. So we get the data back. So you can see that now uh, the data looks like uh, the data looks like actual geometry as a GeoJSON. But if you don't see this, uh, this is because I have one more library installed. Uh, right now that we are going to talk about uh, uh, talk about it very soon but you will see the location data in a wkt format so right out of the bat 
the geojson uh, the, the geometry that we save is is to, uh, is is shown in a wkt format that means if you want to add more data to your uh, to your model uh, you can use the wkt format of any geometry and then you can just add it over here to to send that data back to the back to the database now this is already an improvement over over uh, over sending the data uh, uh, over over using a non special uh, basically non special api so if this is already an improvement just by adding geo uh, geo django we are actually able to deal with the with the gis data now finally when when we work with the gis data we expect that if the data is going to be in json format uh, let it be geo json because yeah geo, uh, the way we create geo json it also has the properties it it also has the geometry and most importantly we can take the geo json and plug it in any any front end application we don't have to then write the code which will then actually understand geo json because geo json is a standard format now to do that we we can use one more package uh, so let me just show you that uh, which is known as django rest framework gi so this is a this is a package by open wisp uh, if i open the github link for the same you can see that uh, the the documentation is quite good so you can simply install it once you have installed you can then again uh, make uh, you can again write that in the in the settings.py in order to make uh, django aware of this and now once we add this we are actually able to see the data in in the format that it is expected which means the geo json now uh, to create geo json we again have to change the way the serializers are working because right now the serializers whatever we have written are are taking our data and then using the model serializer they are just taking each and every column and then they are converting it into the json format now that we want to actually create the geo json on the fly we have to use the uh, we have to use something known as geo feature model serializer which will actually come from from the rest framework gis that we just installed so once we do this this will actually convert the data into geo feature we have to provide certain information like what is the model and what is the geo field name so in our case the geo field is location it can be anything else in your case and then of course the fields so what are all the fields that you want we can actually also restrict the fields by just giving any other field like i am just interested into name and then i can have that uh, we can also do opposite which is known as exclude fields i believe so by doing that whatever list of of columns that you will pass uh, django will leave those columns and return you back everything else so like that uh, we can actually now convert the model serializers into into geo feature model serializers and then again once the serializers are created you can create a view from it so here i have created one more view center location api where then i'm actually using this uh, this uh, location serializer so this model serializer so i'll just confirm the name once so if i copy this and if i paste it yeah there we go so by doing this uh, you can see that it is all uh, it is exactly the same uh, we are not changing anything on the view the view remains same we get all the pokemon centers and then we pass them to the location serializers uh, where in serializers uh, django uses the geo feature model serializers to take the data and then convert it into geo json rather than converting into normal json so by doing this uh we actually get the results in the geo json format so if i run my last url you can see that uh, now if i send it it is actually in the in the geo json format so you can see that we have a feature collection and then feature and then inside this we have all the features so again even the properties are uh, sorted properly so we have the type as feature geometry as point and then inside properties we have all other uh, non special columns so this is how uh, we can use the we can use the uh, geo model serializer to actually create the geo json uh, just like this we can also create we can also post the uh, the geo json by by using the same serializer because the serializer understand geo geo json you can simply pass the data in a geo json format in a post request and it will still work 
uh, just like this we can also create the uh, we can also create the logic for delete and put uh, but instead of getting all the objects in that condition we will be filtering a specific object and then we'll be will be dealing with that uh, so this is how we basically combines the knowledge of django uh, with django rest framework and then and then using geo django and then using a rest api uh, rest framework for gis to actually create uh, apis which understands the location now so far we have just seen how to get post and put the data but the real power of django comes into the picture when we also start using the using the filters so if i just uh, go a couple of steps further so this is uh, already we have seen we can get the data we can also post the data so here you can see that i have i have sent a uh, geo json and then it just got added into into my application now uh, to query the data we can basically use filters so these are some of the filters that you can also find on the on the github of the rest framework gis so by using the b box filter we can just pass the b box and then uh, and then it will automatically use that as a filter to get the location uh, to get the location inside the given b box now this can be passed directly via url and then the result will be will be a list api view just like that we also have distance to point filter which basically takes the distance and then the and then the point and then it will again uh, give you all the data in in a geojson format by using the location serializer but also by using the filter uh, by using this these filters so this is how uh, basically we can we can use the uh, the django filters along with the gis uh, filters uh, using using this this rest framework gis so uh, this is everything that i wanted to cover in 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 25 minutes uh, regarding how you can actually get started with creating apis so once these apis are created uh, you can then obviously use them uh, with with your front end application so if you guys have any questions uh, you can you can definitely ask now Oh, an amazing presentation and live and everything went very well. It's 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 amazing. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, two questions. One very with many votes. It's uh, about the the scalability of this API and uh, can you shed some light on how this compare with other APIs? You, do you think this can manage a lot of traffic? Okay, uh, yeah, that's a valid question. Um, so the reason why I uh, why I use Django is is most of the time when when I start the project, it's it's smaller, but then the components keeps on getting uh, you know added and added, and at the end, it's again a big project. So that's why if I use Django, I don't have to actually care about security that much because it is uh, already inbuilt. Uh, the features are already inbuilt. But if you're just looking to create some basic apis and then that's all then you can use something like uh, like fast api or flask api but then in my uh, in my personal opinion django is used by a lot of big companies so consider the 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 use case of instagram or or udemy uh, if the if if django is uh, is good enough for them i believe it is good enough for me as well so this is uh, this i think uh, we can definitely scale it to the to the level we want uh, because at the end it is just a python so if you if you know python then you can uh, you can do everything with django okay uh, uh, another question more specific is uh, about Django that already has geometry field and there's other fields like point field, polygon field. Uh, so why do you think there is a need for a geomet uh, geometry field? Uh, I believe, uh, so I haven't actually used geometry field, but I believe the use case can be uh, a model where, where you have point, line, polygon, all sort of data in, inside uh, you know one model. In that case, having geometry, it will accept everything. Okay. Oh, another question is: Is it possible to share some code? You have something uh, to share? Definitely. Uh, I can just put the the code that I have just shown to you guys on my GitHub, and then I will put the the link in the chat for you guys to 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 uh, fork it or or download it later. Good. Good. 
there are more people asking for for code than for examples. Yeah, definitely. Um, there is also a question about uh, uh, hosting options for uh, Geo Django. Um, is there any uh, hosting options available? Um, so one thing you have to understand is that whenever you want to use Geo Django, uh, it ultimately uses a lot of, uh, of course, a lot of the GS packages. So whatever is your hosting option, you should be able to install GDAL, uh, which is one of the most important requirement. Uh, and then I guess the hosting option, I have used it on Ubuntu. I have also used it on Mac and or you'll be, you'll be, you'll be able to do a uh, Django is, uh, is is a very famous framework i would say and and you can find documentation all over the places so uh, it should not be uh, you know it should not be that much uh, difficult so thank you very much krishna and thank you for answering these questions and uh, thank you everyone for have attending a nice evening <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's it's I'll I'll just turn off the computer and sleep now. But before that, I'll I'll put the the code on GitHub and then I'm 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 just going to put the link in the chat uh, for you guys to for you guys to download.